Hey everybody, well it's halftime during the 49er game, so that leaves me just enough time to talk about tangential and radial acceleration. Uh, first I'll uh, review what acceleration is uh, in terms of uh, our change in speed, okay, and that's what we're going to end up calling tangential acceleration. But uh, last time we talked about uh, acceleration that can change your direction. Uh, we called it uh, centripetal acceleration and uh, we'll rename it today and call it radial acceleration. We'll combine these two kinds of acceleration into one, um, or at least uh, we'll talk about them uh, happening at the same time to an object as it moves through space. And uh, in doing so, we're going to uh, use two new kinds of unit vectors, uh, one we call r hat and one uh, theta hat. And r hat is one worth really paying attention to because it's going to be used a lot later on. So let's get started. Um, of course, we talked about acceleration. We defined acceleration to be equal to the rate of change of velocity, dvdt, the rate at which I change my velocity vector. Uh, now, if I am only if, if the the acceleration vector is parallel to the velocity vector you're going to change an object's speed so imagine a little you know race car here on a, on a highway or a racetrack or whatever and it has a velocity vector well if you if you uh, hit the gas or you know just accelerator pedal whatever if you put the pedal to the metal you're you're going to increase your speed and so we're going to say that's going to be an acceleration vector that is going to increase my speed and the acceleration vector and velocity vectors are in the same direction it, alternatively if i want to brake here's my car again and here's the direction of my velocity vector when I break my acceleration vector is in the opposite direction as my velocity but in either case this acceleration vector runs along the same line see they're parallel to the velocity vector so if the acceleration vector is parallel to the velocity vector it's going to change the speed of the object now we're gonna in a, in a few minutes we're gonna end up calling this kind of acceleration that changes our speed tangential acceleration. We also talked about uh, last time we talked about centripetal acceleration, and that happened when we were moving in a circle. Okay, so imagine you're in a car going around a turn, or maybe just spinning around in a circle going at, at a constant velocity. So here's my velocity vector and we said the acceleration vector now must be perpendicular towards the center of the circle that we're going. This uh, kind of acceleration does not change the speed. Notice that there's no component of the acceleration vector that's parallel to the velocity vector. So therefore it's not going to change the speed of your velocity. But what it is going to do, it's going to pull that velocity vector over. It's going, to, it's going to pull on it so that it changes its direction. And that's what causes you to go in a circle. I mean, think about this. When, when you leave class today, as you're walking around, think, you know, walk around in a circle and feel that centripetal acceleration. And of course, we said the centripetal acceleration um, had a magnitude of v squared over r and of course the direction of it is centripetal or uh, center seeking okay so that's what we mean by um, centripetal acceleration now of course in real life um, this car can do both at the same time right I mean if, imagine going around a turn and while you're in the turn you're braking, but you're also turning. So you, while you're turning, you're, you're, you know, if you go around a curve like this, let's say this is the path you're going to take, and here's your car at some instant in time. We're looking down on the road. Here's your velocity vector, but of course, 
you know, a few moments later, your velocity vector is going to have changed its direction. And maybe you're braking while you're going around this turn. And so your velocity vector is not only going to change in direction, but maybe its magnitude is going to be less, right? So we've combined these two accelerations, and they're happening at the same time. So we need a way of describing that, that kind of acceleration that's more realistic when you're doing, you're both changing the direction of your velocity vector and you're changing its magnitude. You're changing your speed as you're moving. So here's what we're going to do. Um, a, a real path through space could be, you know, like, this, uh, like a curvy country road. It can be something like this. And so let's look at the car at some instant in time. And at some instant in time, at that instant in time, we can imagine that there is a circle that can be drawn that's, that if you, if you just maintained your speed and your, you know, your rate of turn, you're going to turn around this circle. You're going to go around in a circle. Now, of course, the next moment later, maybe the turn is, is, is changing. Um, but just imagine that if you just right here just maintained this rate of turn, it would draw a circle, wouldn't it? And that circle would have a radius. And at that moment in time, we call this the radius of curvature. Okay. Now, of course, that radius of curvature, it would be a circle if you maintained that radius of curvature um, over time as you, as you go. But, you know, of course, you don't have to maintain that. Um, now, notice something here. Here's my vector that represents my radius of curvature. My velocity is always perpendicular to that. And therefore, if I'm going to change my speed at this moment, if I'm going to either slow down or speed up, my acceleration vector is going to be in this direction or this direction, right? If you're going to speed up, this will be your acceleration. If you're going to slow down, your acceleration will be like this. But what do you notice about this, both of these vectors, with respect to this circle? What do you notice? Look at it carefully. Well, I hope you notice that it's tangent to the circle that you're driving around. And so this kind of acceleration uh, we call tangential acceleration. And so um, tangential acceleration, I'll just call it A sub t, is tangential acceleration. And tangential acceleration, um, it, it's the rate of change of speed. So we, we, it's the rate at which I change my instantaneous velocity. And here's how we write it down. We say dv dt, well here's my velocity vector, but we take the magnitude, or the, we put absolute value signs around a vector. What those absolute value signs actually mean when you put them around a vector is, hey, take the magnitude of this vector and change it over time. That's what this means right here. Now you've got, uh, we need a way of saying tangent to the path. Okay, and so we have a very weird way of saying that, that it's tangent to the path that we're on. And we say that that's theta hat. Theta hat means it's this uh, acceleration is tangential to my path at that instant in time. Now it kind of makes sense because as you move around this circle you're changing your, your, your angular position, your theta. So by saying, you know, that in a way you're kind of saying, oh, hey, theta hat. But if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. Just memorize the definition. Theta hat means in a, a direction that's tangential to the path that we're on. And if if we're acceler I mean if we're speeding up, that means that we're going in a positive theta hat direction. But if my acceleration is in the opposite direction of my velocity vector, that means I'm slowing down. So that would be negative theta hat. And so this is how I describe tangential acceleration. 
it it's the change in speed it's speeding up or slowing down that it's that kind of acceleration but of course as I go around the turn I also feel myself being uh, you know you know as I go as I if I'm turning to the right here I feel like I'm sliding out to the left right and we we said last time that, that was called centripetal acceleration so let's take well I can see this, this picture right here um, and so here is our centripetal acceleration and this I'll just draw it right here and this is a sub r now we're going to call it instead of a sub c a centripetal acceleration we're going to call it a sub r yeah sorry um, a sub r means radial acceleration and a sub r is uh, well we're going to call it radial acceleration and this is the acceleration that changes the direction of my velocity vector okay and so oh by the way since I put a, a unit vector here I should put a vector hat on that so we're gonna do the same thing here well we already know um, what the magnitude of my radial acceleration is because really it's just the same as a centripetal acceleration and last time we showed that the, the magnitude of our centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. We, we call it radial acceleration because uh, we really call it centripetal acceleration when we're dealing with uniform circular motion. That is, we're going to go in a circle and we're just going to go in this circle with a constant velocity. and That's usually when we call it centripetal acceleration. But radial acceleration is when we're in a motion like this, like a car is going around a country road, and so we're turning and we're speeding up and slowing down and turning. Um, okay, now we need a way of describing the direction of our radial acceleration. Now, remember, we did this before. We, we talked about I hat meaning in the x direction, and J hat meant in the y direction, K hat meant that something was in the z direction but look we don't want to do that with this we want to say hey the acceleration that's speeding us up or slowing us down or the the acceleration that is causing us to go in a turn so we don't want to use i hat j hat and k hat because they're really inconvenient for these kinds of problems so what we're going to do is we're going to define a direction um, that means away from the center and that we're going to call that r hat and r hat means away from the center just as theta hat means tangential to the path r hat means away from the center well here's the our center here's the center of curvature the, you know the circle that we're going around so what direction is that? Well, away from the center it looks like this, right? These are all r hat. The, all of these arrows I'm drawing are in the r hat direction. Well, what direction is my is my centripetal acceleration? Well, it's not away from the center. It's toward the center. So how do we how do how do we say that? We say negative r hat. Of course, of course we would do that. Okay, so we would say that our radial acceleration the the acceleration that's changing the direction of my velocity vector is v squared over r in the negative r hat direction now that's the way i like to write it okay but um, a lot of a lot of books and people will put the negative out here negative v squared over r in the r hat direction but here's what i want you to realize there's nothing negative about v squared the speed squared is always positive our radius of curvature there's no such thing as a negative radius what does that mean a circle with a negative radius that's impossible this negative denotes direction and it means we're this acceleration it's it's towards the center of my circle that's what it means that's what that negative means okay so if I'm moving along a curved path, 
okay and you know so let's just take a curved path like an example of that if you're right here you can kind of estimate a, a curvature here in my drawing okay so that would be the circle that we're in and maybe we're here's my velocity vector now velocity vectors are always tangential to the path we're on okay I mean think about it it makes sense okay walk around and, with a meter stick or a yardstick and hold it straight out in front of you and let that represent your velocity vector and walk around notice it's always pointing in the direction you're going the velocity vector always points in the direction you're going of course it would now if I'm you know, let's say I'm gonna speed up um, I'm gonna speed up so that's my tangential acceleration I'm also turning so that's my radial acceleration now what do you notice about these by definition well they're perpendicular to each other right so I can say that my total acceleration is equal to my tangential acceleration plus my radial acceleration okay that's my this is this is what you feel when you're in a car if you're like speeding up as you're coming out of a turn you would feel both a tangential and radial acceleration and they would be combined together in one ex experienced acceleration okay so that acceleration would you'd feel an acceleration kind of like this because I'm gonna add the t the radial plus the tangential acceleration to get my overall acceleration and we would write it like this uh, the tangential acceleration is just my rate of change of my velocity vector and it's in the theta hat direction uh, plus and v squared over r in the negative r hat direction okay now again this is the way I like to do it I like to put the negative with the r hat unlike some textbooks they'll put the negative out here and you have minus v squared and it, it confuses I think it's confusing to do it that way Ooh, I need to put a back unit vector hat on that okay now if you know what this is and you know what this is if you figure it out like if you know what the magnitude of my tangential vector is and the magnitude of my radial vector well uh, how do I figure out what the magnitude is of my overall vector it's easy of course you just use the Pythagorean theorem it's my tangential acceleration squared plus my radial acceleration squared right because these guys make a right triangle when you add them together like when you're adding these accelerations together you have to think that it's vector addition it's vector addition and so that means when you add them together they make a triangle and of course they're going to make a right triangle which allows you to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the overall acceleration and of course if they want to know this angle you can use inverse tangent you could just use the geometry of the problem um, they want you to find that angle right there um, uh, you can just use just draw the triangle and figure out what they're asking for okay so I think we're we're uh, done here um, we have said that there are two kinds of accelerations um, acceleration that changes your speed and we call that tangential acceleration and we said okay this is our rate of change of speed and the direction that's tangential to my path I'm gonna call that theta hat so whenever you see a theta hat just think oh tangential to the path okay and then the radial acceleration we used to call that centripetal acceleration it's the acceleration that changes my direction it's v squared over r in the negative r hat direction negative meaning towards the center of our turn and then of course we can combine them together to to find our overall acceleration okay that's it uh, good luck in life and everything else <laughs>